my friend Abby Pacinelli. Bring us out for seminars, man. Sometimes you just have an eye for things. People have an eye for art. People have an eye for wine. I have an eye for arms. <laughs> They're both black belts. And I think she's second or three black belts. No, I went one and one. I think she was a little bit with. I mean, that'll be tight. Yeah. 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 Oh, cool. 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 All right. Next turn. So, first and foremost, get with your partner. Take a partner and hopefully the relative will be Nice try, try. 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 I have the other one. I have the loud one. Oh, you did have the loud one? Yeah. <laughs> you gotta get a whole matching set. Yeah, of course. I like it. I like the loud one. So we wanna move, we're just gonna move around a little bit. I'm, I'm focusing on hand fighting. So just give you a couple weapons when hand fighting. Not sure how familiar everyone is with their hand fighting. So you have wrist control, same side wrist. You have far side wrist. You have two on ones. You have a two on one to the tricep. All right. When we move, I'm going to move in circular motions versus forward and backward. And we're just hand fighting. So we'll be moving in circles. Nothing up high. No collar ties. Just hand fighting. So getting arm drags, hand side controls. Just grab, getting getting wrist control, coming for the elbow. Nothing higher than a tricep. And then a good way to break. Um, wrist control, you can either slap the wrist and pull. You can, if it's just a one-on-one, -on -one, you can wrist roll, re-grab. Um, those are, those are pretty much, if you, if you go for the two-on-one, -on -one, just don't over-exaggerate and compromise your position and expose yourself to a takedown. So I'm just looking for a little bit of movement. We're fighting here, trying to get control, create angles. As I get this control, I'm working for this angle, so she needs to work away. All right, so then work the back and grab here. Just work, find a nice little little uh, rhythm with your partner. We don't have to be fast, you but can go once back you guys get a rhythm. You can go back and forth and say, hey, you're on offense for a minute and switch back and forth, or if you want to just, just do it like almost live action kind of. Yeah, no, 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 we can't engage back and forth. I mean, we're just hand fighting, so there's not, there's really not any engaging. We're just hand fighting here. Want to, want to focus on movement, getting some kind of control, and we're, we're quickly going to work into more uh, offensive positions. Right? Okay? One, two, three. Yeah. Ready? <laughs> Think about your name at their level too. So. the very basic nitty-gritty stuff of wrestling your, just your stance so your stance you're going to break at your knees and your hips just a little bit just enough that you're not super low you can actually move but you can also respond and defend quickly I don't like reaching with my lead hand because it exposes my lead leg so if you ever do reach I like to reach with my with my backhand when you're when you're moving it's a shuffle, 
back and forth. All right, you're driving off that back, back foot, never crossing because it's real easy to get thrown and push off balance. All right, just a couple little keys. Um, so anytime you're doing the shuffle drill, if you guys do shuffle drill in class, really focus on not touching your feet and not crossing your feet. I see so many people do it in our class, and I'm always hollering, don't touch your feet. So like, don't, don't necessarily focus on squat, you know, staying low, whatever. Think about your feet. When you're in, so that's just something that you can kind of take home for when you're practicing, because everybody does it in warm-up. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Elbows in. Right here, flared elbows. Everything is exposed underneath. No good defense. Elbows in. Jiu-jitsu wise, when you start getting in the pocket and you start engaging for takedowns, I like my head here. Everybody likes to just club the head, feed the guillotine, everybody. And even if you shoot, if I shoot and my head's down, there's a guillotine. So if I shoot, my head's here, boom. There's no sprawl, there's no guillotine. If she does sprawl, I'm, if she does sprawl, I'm in great condition. And I can just reshoot. And there's no feeding for the guillotine, all right? You know, it's kind of a lot, but just think about those little things when you're not being engaged and we're just moving in circular motions. Can't fight. All right? One, two, three. Oh, it leads in. It leads <laughs> into everything. And if we can't do this to at least a certain level, then nothing else matters. Uh, we, we can't close the distance if we can't close this little bit of distance first. All right? So the next, the next thing. I'm gonna work off the opposite side, grab, grab the tricep, come here. Grab the tricep, come here. Once we get here, I'm pushing this tricep away. All right, we've got options here. She's exposing her back, so she she's gonna to want to turn and face. But right here, we're creating angles for our shots. We got an angle here, here, and here. So start back here. Uh, Far side wrist control, grab the tricep, push it away. We're not so much focused on taking her back just yet, but once we get control here, we're pushing away and turning our hips away. All right, for this drill, I want you to tap here, tap the head, tap here, tap the head, tap here, tap the head, tap here. All right. <laughs> the, the tapping of the head is a setup. You're, you're resetting your shot every time you do it. So if I want to, if we're out here, I'm playing out the side of the pocket, I'm gonna tap here, make her think about this. Maybe she thinks it's a collar tie. Maybe it just gets her to blink. Maybe I come here and snap down just a teeny bit, she pops up, oh, there's my shot. Right. Work into this first, work into the tricep, wrist control, far side wrist control, get the tricep, push away. Far side wrist control, push away. We're creating angles with these. The hardest shots to hit are the ones that are straight on. The easiest shots to hit are the ones that we create angles because it's harder to defend. Right? So here, that side to side movement, that's how you get the angles. When we move side to side. Moving forward and backward, all you get is if you blast through them or if you don't. So just work here, creating these angles. Boom. Boom. Right? Once, uh, take, take turns, each partner doing that uh, five times each side, and then start the touch drill. Uh, once I see everybody's trying to do the touch drill, I know it's going to get a little funky, and people are going to be, what am I touching? I'll, I'll go, go over that again, but that's what we're working into. All right? One, two, three. <laughs> You want to be close, but you're exposing her back. So I'm coming here, grabbing the tricep. Once I get the tricep, this isn't as important anymore. I'm using this to get to that. So I'm, I'm out here, I'm playing it safe. The wrist is a lot easier to get than this. Grab the wrist, pull you in, push my Once I get here, I'm pushing you away. Chest. Chest. Start off nice and slow. Make sure you and your partner have a rhythm before we think about faster, harder, or anything like that. When you guys have a rhythm, I like to bring my partner closer and make it make them work harder, just a little bit, enough to make it difficult. When we find our rhythm doing that, 
I like to create angles. So I'll take my overhook. Right. I, I, like, to take, <laughs> I like to take Sorry. my overhook and pinch at my underhook and shoot over. All right, now not only am I distorting her upper body, but all of my weapons are now really close to her legs. My knees close to her legs. I can touch both of her knees without extending myself. I come here, boom. My head's in optimal position. Just drive. We're not really gonna focus on the, leg, the legs part, but creating the angles. So here, boom. She swims inside. Swim inside. Oh, you want me to wing? Wizard? Swim inside. Oh, you want me to go? Oh, okay. So we're still pummeling. Just, yeah, just so we keep working. And then she'll take her shot at creating an angle. Okay. So a little bit of back and forth there. Start slow. Smooth, slow is smooth, smooth is fast. Make it a little more difficult. And then start changing angles and creating angles. Okay. One, two, three. Then I'll show you guys the takedown. What? You can't take the training wheels off until they ride them first. So start like this. Start like a starfish. Yep. So we're gonna smack you in the head. So you're only focusing on your Make sure you're creating the angles. If you guys aren't sure exactly how to use that or what you're doing there. You guys give me a little look like that. I was saying, when I pummel, with that, with that over under, if you say I come here, and shoot his hand across his back, and then I'm going to make sure he can start to shoot his hand. So it's a good thing. So yeah, so when we're doing this next step that we're going to do of coming around, you're already flexed, so you're just shooting that arm up. And in fact, like if I create this angle, it gets away. It gets away. I'm like, I'm going to pummel. Come up and around. You're working. Go ahead. We're going to do one side, and then your number two. So this is number one. Now number two. We're underhook. We started creating this angle here. All right, this is probably one of my favorite takedowns. Um, it's an Ushimata. So we're going to take this wrist control and this underhook. And then we're going to step. So without the hooks, this is what the footwork's gonna look like. I'm gonna be here, it's gonna be one, two, one, one two, oh, okay. So we have the underhook, I'm pulling, I'm pulling real hard on here, on this one, and I'm shooting here. Your hips are already at. My hips are already where I want them to be. So I'll take this step just to close the distance between my feet, and then I'm not loading up and kicking this leg. Your partner's gonna thank you for that too. And you don't need to, you don't need to. It's not gonna, it's gonna give the move away. So you're, it's your tell. I get here, it's just here, hip in. Like I'm trying to kick that wall with my heel. I right? don't have to load up, I'm just pushing it out of the way. When I do, I shoot that back, that underhook. I shoot the underhook over this way, and then pull this tricep to me. So a little push-pull action. And I'm taking her off her foot. All right? You guys need to see that again? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, bite down on the overhook. Shoot the underhook across the back. Create the angle. When you do, your hips should be pretty much where you need them to be. I'm just going to close the distance between my feet. Take this pose. Okay. Right. I was going to stop. <laughs> Let's hear some slamming. One, two, three. Boom! Yeah, so you're going to step away yeah. far back. So when you come in for this underhook, you immediately kind of just take it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
this this leg is the first where it needs to be. Yeah, be a dog fight position if we're here. Um, no one really has the upper hand, so it could be if you get a little scrappy. So here's a drill that we can use to uh, strengthen this position. Hip to hip. Facing each other? No, no, yeah, both looking this way. Okay. So we're gonna go hip to hip. One's got an over, the other's got a wizard. I'm gonna hook her leg, she's gonna hook mine. And we're gonna try to get these legs off the ground. And we wanna attack these angles. We wanna attack here, attack here. The lower you get, the better your balance is gonna be. So for up here, we're just gonna be falling all over the place. But this is gonna help with your balance. And when we're going live in a situation like this, this is literally probably what it's gonna feel like. All right, that we're squabbling here. They're trying to knock me off balance. She's got the wizard reach for wrist control here. You guys, somebody hits the mat, come back up. We're not going 100% with this drill. 50-50 kind of gives each other some resistance because you kind of have to so you guys can work on your balance. But we're not trying to smash each other here. Um, torque in the wizard. Um, she's getting, she can get really good leverage as she works on that wizard. I can also like track her arm here. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of options here but I'm gonna work a series and it's gonna take a little bit of reflex and balance for me to go from here to here. So I just wanna throw this drill in there, give you guys a little feel for the position. So when we do go for this transition, it feels a little more at home, right? One, two, three. You can start from standing too, if you guys were in that pummeling position, like he pummels in. All right, we're here. So you can just get into it. You don't have to do that. I mean, but if you got, if your balance is that bad, start on the ground. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. I know, uh, I Again, the lower, <laughs> like, if you both get lower, <laughs> naturally your balance is going to be better because you're lowering your center of gravity. So don't, don't, don't fight up here. Like you're dropping your shoulder into him. Yeah. So he's trying to, he's trying to get what we were just getting. And you're trying to resist it and also reverse it. Like you have just as much as he does. What I was doing the other day, and that had to drive this. Can you get this man up and down? Uh, that way, yep. And then take an angle. We, we failed the kick. Whether we did a terrible uh, mule kick or they just have great balance, they saw it come in, whatever. Um, or maybe you just don't like the mule kick. Maybe the mule kick's your setup to get to this front headlock position. All right, so I kick. I go from her far side waist, it's just bending the elbow to grab this shoulder. Right? It's best when done while she's off balance a little bit. I can fully capitalize on this position. Hit, transition, front hand lock position. All right, once I, once I secure this, weight down. All right, we have, uh, we have this underhook. I like it, uh, I have the chin strap. If you like the guillotine, this is a great time to attack it. If they're giving it to you, I always recommend going for the choke. Even if you, even if ultimately you don't secure it, go for the choke. All right. So from here, maybe. Can you guys see how what his hands are doing right now? So this hand is on my chin. Mm -hmm. This hand is under and up over my shoulder. All right. We call this a cement mixer position. All right. I can put it right. I'm going to put it right to, to her back with this. I'm not going to. I'm not going to focus on the guillotine uh, from a technique standpoint. But it's there. Um, if you guys like the guillotine, go for it. I actually prefer to use the chin for control. If I go deep, I'm not. I, if I'm not attacking the guillotine, this arm isn't doing a whole lot. So I prefer to come to the chin and control the chin and the head. Now with this underhook, shoot it right across the body. <laughs> Probably gonna come out the back. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, <laughs> so, um, sorry, I had a, I had a
had a funny comment, but I lost it. <laughs> so, so from here, mule kick, come to the shoulder cat, back down. Whenever you're in the front headlock position, you should not be on your knees because then you're bearing your weight and they are not. So here, even if it's just a little bit, it changes everything. Grab that chin strap. And my chin strap, like football, I'm just cupping the chin. I have this underhook. I'm just going to shoot this up underneath, across the back. Scoop the arm, settle my hips, and be heavy. When I'm in this position, I don't like my hips on the mat. Elevate them. Now, again, she is holding my weight. I'm not. She has to work a little harder. Okay. When you went to flipper, you did put your knees on the mat. So when I went there, yeah. But until I decide what I'm doing, yeah, I want her to hold my weight at all times. Until you're ready to make the move. Right. When I'm ready to move, when I'm ready to move, I'm not worried about them. Just take it. Okay. So <clears throat> my name is Nicholas Willie. Um, <laughs> I've done MMA wrestling. My experience. Uh, Probably did five years, six years in MMA, went pro, started a family. Pro MMA wasn't my focal point anymore. Um, always knew I'd come back to jiu-jitsu. Wrestled in college, wrestled in high school, won some stuff. Um, jiu-jitsu, I'm kind of winning some stuff too. So just I specialize on my feet. That's not to say that I don't have good jiu-jitsu, but when I step on the mat, the difference is usually between me and my opponent is on the feet. I'm guaranteed, almost guaranteed to win there unless I'm going against somebody, probably a wrestler, Olympic wrestler, D1. Um, and my theory is if you can control the feet, you can control where the match goes. Um, if you're ever down, on points or the score is tied or you're in a situation where you have to take it to the mat or you have to stop them from taking it to the mat, whoever's better on their feet is probably going to win. Um, a guard puller is not going to get two points for a takedown. If I can impose my will, I, I love having that ace in the hole. So that's the that's my philosophy between my jiu-jitsu and the difference between my jiu-jitsu and a lot of other creatures. That's about it, guys. And we love him. <laughs> yeah, you guys love me until it's my turn. <laughs> so he's doing mostly no game and he'll do mostly stand up, no game wrestling kind of stuff for us to get us top down our feet. Um, most of y'all know me. <laughs> um, not much to say. Um, anybody have any questions about today? How we're gonna run it? Oh. So we're hoping to do like an hour and a half, hour and 20 minutes of gi, um, which I will be the main focus, depending on time, we might, um, Nick might add in some two cents here and there. Um, if we want to roll, we can roll, and then we'll switch it over to no gi and help the focus, um, and again at the end, depending on time. Um, so we're gonna start with just some warm-ups, um, but warm-ups, not like we did last time at the my last seminars. We're gonna do it focused on what we're gonna, going to teach. Um, so we're going to start in guard, here, and we're just going to do like an arm bar back and forth drill here, and I like to control both sleeves with the thumb and grip here, and pinch to your chest. If you don't want them here, arm bars you want elbows, obviously. So the higher you can control your arms here, the better. Um, we're going to switch our hips. First, we're going to kick off the, the hip, however, we're not going to continue kicking off the hip. We want the first leg to literally kick him over and high up on his shoulder. I don't want this leg down here. Reason I want it high, look how much I can control his upper body with this. So if he tries to posture back up, I have more weight on him here, whereas if I'm here, he can just posture right back up. He sees it coming. Ideally, we want to be able to switch our hips without even putting this foot on that hip. And then we're going to kick over and go for the arm bar. From here, this leg stays up, keeping him postured down. This top leg is gonna swing and go right to that high position again, and we're gonna pinch down with the head. The arm we're attacking is this bottom arm, obviously. If you have it right, I can literally barely, barely move. 
arm bars are in the legs. Everybody thinks arm bars are grabbing with your hands. Arm bars are more in your hips and in your legs, okay? So just to get us started, we're gonna go to one side, pinch, pinch them down. And then we're just gonna go back and forth, swing, pinch, <coughs> swing, pinch. My leg, my foot's facing that way. It's not down here, it's way up here. Swing, pinch. And notice my angle as well. I'm perpendicular with him, okay? So he's this way, I'm completely this way. If you're here, that leg's not where it needs to be. You gotta make sure that leg's super high. Does anybody have any questions with just that drill? We're just gonna kinda go back and forth, say like 10 times with your partner. And you're literally swinging back and forth. You're gonna use a lot in your abs. You're pinching those two sleeves and holding onto those two sleeves for the drill and just swinging back and forth. <coughs> Break dancing. Boom, boom, going completely back and forth. So give it a try. Obviously at first it's gonna be weird, um, but think about most importantly is moving your body um, and then pinching them down. Okay, now one, two, three. I don't even know. So we're doing the omoplata one. So you're going to essentially put this hand on the ground, get this one out. So we're gonna do the same thing, omoplata. You can start in the omoplata position if you want because uh, that's the hardest part. But same concept, I'm holding onto his arm over here. We're gonna swing, he's gonna put this arm on the mat here. We're gonna swing around, take the omoplata, okay? And this, this one, you wanna be more than perpendicular, you ideally wanna be further. So we're gonna open up, he's gonna put his other arm in to this side. But we're doing the same thing with our legs by penduling them around to get our momentum going. Does everybody here know omoplata, at least the position, and has been there? Yeah. Okay, so we're, we're not gonna sit up. We're not going this far. We're just locking it in, controlling the elbow. Opening up, partner puts the arm in, we swing it around. Okay, on three, one, two, three. <laughs> control the sleeve. So do you hold it here? The two, but this one you're going to keep coming back to center here. So first, we're going to do our arm bar. We're here in the arm bar, right? The position we we're just working. Say he pulls that arm out. We're going to shove this one in our pocket and go to the omoplata. Then you could drill it to the other side. Again, this one you can kick off because we're just doing it from standing. You've got to get some momentum going. He pulls the arm out, shove it in the pocket, keep going to the omoplata. And at this point, I grab the wrist and shove it into my pocket here. Here, arm bar, let go, keep going. And this is where you would eventually come up and sit up. Any questions? So work with your partner, get to that arm bar position, let go of that arm bar. Or let them pull that arm that you're attacking out, and then you're gonna attack the other arm. Okay? On three. One, two, three. And now my guard. I open this up, get it nice and stretched. When I'm ready, this hand that's on this pistol grip, giving some pressure over here. I'm gonna come over and pinch right above his elbow. I don't wanna be too high up because then he still has movement of this arm. If I pinch right at his elbow, most of the time they're gonna posture up. He postures up, I'm going right to that arm bar. It's there. Even if he pulls out now, he can't. Sometimes they'll try to stack you. I come up with it. That arm's trapped. So from the beginning again, Open this up, pinch, pop it open, feed this out. Sometimes I'll feed it out and then I'll start threatening some other things so they forget it's out and then go back to it and trap that arm. The one different thing about this arm bar compared to most arm bars that you learn, just basic arm bars, is that you need that elbow across. For this one, it can be right in the center because when you move your hips, 
you're putting it where it needs to be. So you're moving rather than forcing them to move because they're just going to resist. So you're putting your body where you're going to finish that armbar. Look at my legs. This is exactly what I was showing you with where your legs need to be. You're pinching, you're pinching. Again, he comes up. I'm coming right up with him, and I'm going to finish. Look at all this leverage. If you can't see over here, with an arm bar, you shouldn't have to make much movement to finish that arm bar. You should have plenty of movement here just to make that slight little tap to finish it. You shouldn't have to be cranking, cranking, cranking that arm bar. If you get it to the right point on that arm, you're going to be able to finish it with just a little adjustment. Okay? One more time. It's time too, guys. <laughs> All right, so he opens up, pop. Finish, he comes up, continue holding on. On three, one, two, three. Wait, this is probably my most successful <laughs> armbar competition. That's all right, we'll, we'll get through this one. Yeah, yeah who just called me? That grip break a little bit. So he's holding my grip, same grip right here. We're popping it up. The other thing I like to do is while my hand is still on his hand, I'll shove it underneath and pinch it here. Pull it across, whatever I want to do with it. You notice how much he is postured forward. I'm using my legs and my arm, I'm posturing him forward. From this point, you have a couple options. You can aim him in whatever direction you want to go. So if I want to just come up and take the back, I'm going to aim them this way and take the back. So we break the grip, hand still on it, shove it under, shove it all the way across, and literally just pull him into a back position. So we'll just do that really quickly. That's not really what I wanted to learn, but it's definitely an option depending on where he lands. So this is, you want him to land on the shoulder or beyond the shoulder of where you're pulling that sleeve. And you can literally boom, pop it under, over. So he's here already. I mean, you can see I practically have his back at this point. I kind of come up and grab either just some meat here or you can grab the gi here. And so I'm going to keep this out and I'm just literally just going to pull him into my back. Um, don't cross your legs. I'm sure you're one of them. Keep your feet here. I like to put my foot on this hip. I don't actually get hooks unless I'm looking for points. I like to control the hips. So I like to put this foot on the hip unless, again, I need the points and I can pull them further to get the points. So try that real quick. One, two, three. You're keeping that hand on his fist and shoving it under your wrist. And immediately grabbing fabric, whatever you can in this lat. Um, get the lapels out. This is a, an awesome grip. If he tries to sit up right now, he's not. <laughs> um, absolute minimum, I want you to grab the lat, but no gi, it's a little bit more slip factor. Obviously here there's a little more slip factor. Try to grab some gi. From this point, his arm is across. His head's on this shoulder, but his arm is across here because I had that pistol grip and I put it across here. Everybody come over this side for a second. <laughs> this is a good arm bar, you. <laughs> Look at this nice straight arm that's sitting out here. <laughs> so I'm gonna feed my hand after I let go. I can let go of this pistol grip once I have him postured down like this. He now, this is trapped. My, he, I'm hugging it between my belly and his belly. I'm gonna go over this arm and under his leg here. Oh, <laughs> You're gonna push like we were pushing before. Legs go to where they are and it's cranked in here. A little bit is gonna finish that arm bar. So your shoulder's holding. Yeah. So grip break, boom, we're tucking it under, we're not jacking him all the way that way, we're pulling him towards us here. Locking it in, over the arm, under the leg. Finishing it like that, and I didn't even crank it, he's tapping away. <laughs> 
Is that simple enough to what we were doing? So you're pulling, you're not pulling them across your belly and making them face plant. You're hugging them to the shoulder and grabbing that lat. Making sure that you've still kind of pulled this arm out from between the two of you so that arm's straight. And you're gonna leave your arm in and under and then finish that way. The rest of the finish is the same. Once you have this arm locked in, hand, legs up like we were working before. Okay, on three, one, two, three.